Boss Up, everyone. Mark Lobiner, TigerFitness.com for all your sport nutrition needs, all your supplement needs, all your needs in general. We have awesome swag. We got everything you need, man. Slant boards, TigerFitness.com. That's my site. Please shop there and support us. Support this channel. B P C. No, not BBC. B P C. Unless you like BBC. One five seven. Does it really work or is it just a fad? This comes from Tommy McLaughlin1 on Instagram when I called for questions. Thank you so much for being a part of this channel, part of my social media, and let's answer this question. So I have tried BPC157 on two separate occasions. The first occasion, I don't think I took enough. So people were like, oh, I don't think you took enough. And they're like, uh, well, where did you get it? Well, I got it from my doctor. I got it from my doctor. So it was prescribed, legit, compound pharmacy, BPC-157. And uh, it didn't do anything. I injected into my knee, which was achy at the time. I coach a lot. And in coaching, I do a lot of ballistic movements. And I also train myself really hard. And I also put it in my elbows. Did nothing. Did nothing. So fat, and, and also I would say, and if you inject it into the area where they say to inject it into the area that hurts, and they say that for BPC-157, even though it's systemic, that does give you better results. So I did everything by the book. All it did is cause PIP. Like I had a welt and this prescribed, this prescription, you know, alcohol swabs. I didn't have dirty needles or anything. And um, still, uh, still had some, some terrible PIP. Fast forward, I went to a site. Um, legit stuff, legit stuff. Um, sworn by, um, he has lab tests. I'm not going to mention it because it's not going to be the most glaring review of BPC-157. But I, um, <clears throat> I did it. Not only did I do it, so I paid for this. And it wasn't a freebie. So I, you're, you're getting my honest opinion. I spent, I, I don't remember, it was probably $1,000 or so. And I got a good, God, God bless him for giving me a discount. I had a good discount, but I paid. And the discount I handed on to everybody else because I had a coupon code in case people want to try it again. I didn't go like, try it, heal yourself with me. I'm like, hey, if you want to try this, here's the coupon code. Didn't get commission or anything, but same coupon code everybody else used. And so I was injecting in my, my left elbow, my right elbow, and my lower back. At that time, my lower back was killing me, again, from coaching, from life, from everything, whatever, from lifting heavy, from deadlifting, from squatting. So it did nothing. In fact, I would say it did less than nothing because the PIP from injecting it in those areas was worse than if I didn't do it. So this was also combined with TB500 and I believe MGF and I injected this locally, okay? So long story short, um, nothing happened. It, it didn't do anything and I'm trying to figure out if something's wrong with me. And so I was looking at a lot of people get great results and don't let me um, sway you from trying any of these substances, especially if they're prescribed, of course, um, if your doctor thinks it could work for you. I'm just giving you my feedback, what I got from it. And what I got was a lot of nothing. In fact, I got a thousand pounds, a thousand dollars lighter, you know? At the end of the day, when we look at BPC-157, a lot of people who take it that I've seen are generally healthy people getting over an injury. Uh, people after pec tears, people after injuries where they have surgery. So they're injecting this, they're doing all of the rehab from their doctor, and they're getting better. And their whole thing is, well, I'm getting better faster. And my answer, my question is, how do you know? Like, there's no control group. Because, like, I'll tell you what, like, I recover from injuries pretty fast without the stuff. So does it increase your healing 8%, 10%, or maybe it works in a situation where you have a trauma from a surgery, yet when you have wear and tear issues like I do, it doesn't work. And I don't know, so I'm looking at, like, so I'm looking at what's wrong, what's going on, and I think the biggest issue is we lack human data. So what does BPC-157 do? So there's therapeutic use, especially in healing wounds and repairing tissues. Here's the thing, though. It's animal studies. It seems to promote healing in muscles, tendons, and ligaments. Um, it speeds up tissue repair by enhancing fibroblast activity. Um, it helps reduce muscle scarring, um, a common, you know, a common issue that impairs muscle function post-recovery. Uh, Anti-inflammatory effects. 
uh, vital growth factors um, like vascular endothelial growth factor and fibroblast growth factor, both crucial for cell growth and tissue repair. It combats atrophy in case of chronic disease. It's neuroprotective. I've read about benefits in cardiac tissue, in heart tissue, uh, potentially promoting tissue regeneration, including blood flow, influencing growth factors and modulating inflammatory response, mitigates scarring and muscle loss. Ooh, here's the problem though. These are all in animal studies. So they are all in animal studies. And I'm looking at it like there was a very small human study with 16 participants. 12, got, 12 of these patients got PPC-157 in their knees and 11 of the 12 supported, reported significant knee pain reduction. However, many of the study subjects had ligament sprains and tendon issues, which often heal on their own over time. So again, their knee got better, but would it have gotten better before? Was it due to the BPC-157 or was it due to just time? So there are currently zero randomized controlled stu trials studying BPC-157 in humans. So the studies were on rodents. The studies haven't shown clear toxicity or negative side effects. However, there's lack of substantial evidence supporting its use in humans. So that's crucial because people are taking such high doses. And if it has an impact on these signaling pathways in the cell, that could pose risks. So it is not approved by the FDA for clinical use. And most online vendors, the smart ones, even, though, and even then there, there's huge risk of litigation in selling these products. There, there just is. There's a reason why most of them can't accept credit cards directly. Despite putting the labels that they're third party tested, the people I bought from, they do test it, but who's to say? Who's to, you can fudge a lab test. Are you really gonna look up the lab test where it is? So there are countless studies that warn people that some manufacturers fail to comply with basic manufacturing standards, okay? This is what set MTS Nutrition, Ambrosia, and all the brands I'm a part, I'm a part of, apart from everybody else, is that we actually have posted the third-party lab test. We do it for every batch of outright bars. If I mean, it's, it's one of those things where we post these results. So if you have supplement companies who are under the scrutiny of the FDA doing it, what happens when someone who isn't under the guy, under the you know watchful eye of the FDA, has to abide by these regulations. Will they, or will they cut costs to ensure that it's a short term business selling these kind of products? It just is. Do I believe they should be legal? Absolutely. But as long as the FDA is doing their thing, like you have to look at that. You have to look at that. So another thing you need to realize, if you are a competing athlete in whatever sport it is, it is not approved for human use as a drug. USADA states that there's no legal base for selling BPC-157 as a food, drug, or dietary supplements, primarily due to safety concerns, because no one knows if there's a safe dose. No one knows. I mean, we're going off of rodent studies. So just as I said with the experimental therapy that came out to treat this virus, that went around in 2020. I say it for this, like we need more human data. And until then, I can't recommend, but I will say that you're an adult, okay? You can do your own research and if you feel it would help you, then by all means, do it. But at the end of the day, the reason BPC-157 might not have worked for me is for the aforementioned reasons. N number one is that we don't really know the dosing. We're going off of rodent models. Number two is that aside from the rodent models, the one study out there was done on 16 people and 11 and 12, their knee got better. That's about it. So we know the pathways it works. We're assuming it works. But there's a lot more work to be done. TB500, BPC157, are they legit compounds? Probably but I think we need to work more on them. I think we need to study more on them. And I think we need to figure out what the dosing is, what the frequency is. And honestly, while I love rodent data, I think it's the start to a lot of things. Until we have the human data, we're pretty much just guessing. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts. Comment down below. If you took BPC-157 and it worked for you, let me know.
Again, man, I believe every human being should be able to make their own choice. If you want to take an experimental therapy because you don't want to get a, you know, um, a, 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 a virus or you think it'll help you with it, I think that's your right to choose so. If you want to take something that has tremendous rodent data with lacking human data because you have an ouchie, I think that should be your right, your prerogative. But I think we also need to openly discuss, it doesn't seem like anybody out there is talking about the potential negative side effects from drugs like this. But anytime you buy one of these things, remember, it says not for human consumption. And while I believe that that's cool, you should still be able to take it, it shouldn't be a law against it. I do believe that you need to have all of the information to make a smart decision. But would I take BPC-157 again? Even if data was out there that it does something, I would, but it'd be really hard to sell me on it being that I tried it twice and it didn't really do much. Hopefully that helps you guys. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm Mark Lobliner. Um, be sure to like my Instagram page too. It's at Mark Lobliner. And uh, again, tigerfitness.com for all your support nutrition needs. That's not a game. The RI Bar was created for my kids. My kids need a snack to eat during soccer tournaments. And also I wanted a bar for myself to eat pre-workout, post-workout, and also throughout the day. You want your Outright Bars right now. That's why we have a partnership going with The Vitamin Shop to make sure that we're in all 750 plus locations, providing the best price, the best service, the best people to give you the Outright Bar when and where you need it.